Hi everybody, so we're looking at translation today, which is the second stage of protein synthesis after transcription. So first of all, we'll just look at an overview so we can understand the role of the transfer RNA, the tRNA, before we can see the details of how translation works. So we're starting off with our double-stranded DNA molecule, which is in the nucleus, and one of those strands is going to be transcribed to give us our length of messenger RNA. The messenger RNA then is translated, which is what we're looking at today. So that process of translation involves the ribosome reading the sequence of bases on the messenger RNA and ending up with a protein. So here's our first codon on our messenger RNA and that codon will give us um, the amino acid methionine. And translation is just the process of the ribosome moving along the messenger RNA one codon at a time and adding in the correct amino acids which then get joined together by peptide bonds. So the transfer RNA is responsible for bringing these amino acids to the ribosome. So this process here, this translation is taking place in the ribosome. So the transfer RNA looks a bit like this and this transfer RNA is attached to an amino acid the methionine amino acid. So at the ribosome the role of this transfer RNA is to bring the amino acid which is out in the cytoplasm, bring it to the ribosome and put it in the correct place and then it leaves again. And then another tRNA will bring the next amino acid to the ribosome, it leaves it there, the tRNA detaches and then those two amino acids can be joined by a peptide bond. And that happens again and again all the way along our messenger RNA sequence until you've got a sequence of amino acids which ma match the sequence of codons on the messenger RNA. So that's what the transfer RNA does. So the transfer RNA molecule, uh, just like any other RNA molecule, is a single-stranded length of RNA. So single-stranded, and you can see that we've got um, uracil instead of thymine, just the same as we have with messenger RNA. The thing about transfer RNA, though, is although it's a single strand, it's folded up to form a particular shape. So this is the shape that we see. So our single strand, starting with a three prime end, is folded so we have these loops. Okay, then we have another loop and another loop. So in two dimensions it looks a bit like this, we call it a clover leaf shape. It then gets folded again into three dimensions, um, in which case these two loops sort of fold across on each other and we end up with more like an L shape. So because we end up with two parts of the RNA molecule very close together, we actually end up with complementary base pairing. So hydrogen bonds form between nucleotides um, on the same RNA molecule. Now at the start of the tRNA, we always have ACC. It's always the same sequence and this is where the amino acids will attach. So every tRNA molecule starts off with ACC, even though different amino acids will attach. As you then move down the tRNA strand, we obviously have a sequence of um, bases, and then around the loop, also a sequence of bases. So this is still bases, I just haven't drawn them in because they're not um, bonded to another base. There's no base pairing going on there. But you can see on this section, because these two parts of the same strand are close to one another, we would have hydrogen bonding between these complementary base pairs. When we get down to this loop here, we have the anticodon. So the anticodon is a series of three bases, and those three bases will be complementary to the messenger RNA codon. So this is a strand of messenger RNA. 
Here is our triplet code, our codon. Our anticodon here, as you can see on the transfer RNA, is complementary. So C has paired with G, A has paired with U, and C has paired with G. Oops, sorry, let me just go back. So what we have here is anticodon codon complementary base pairing. If we look at the rest of the tRNA molecule, again, you can see that as you've come around the loop, we've again got um, two sections of the tRNA molecule where we've got base pairing. Then we've got another loop over here. We've got base pairing and we've got base pairing. Before the transfer RNA is able to um, get an amino acid and take it to the ribosome, the amino acids have to be activated. So again, here's our transfer RNA molecule. And the anticodon you can see here, as we've just seen, will be complementary to a messenger RNA codon. So if you look at this messenger RNA uh, codon in an mRNA codon table, you'll find this amino acid. But before this amino acid is able to attach to the transfer RNA here, you have to activate it. Um, and that just means that, um, that it is it, a reaction takes place using ATP. You don't need to know the details. But when that happens, the amino acid is activated and it's, um, it's like an intermediate. So we started off with our own amino acid and now the ATP has sort of joined with the amino acid in a way that it's storing some energy and that energy can then be used to make peptide bonds later on. Now the amino acid has been activated, it's able with the use of an enzyme to attach onto the amino acid activation site at the top of the transfer RNA. The transfer RNA is now able to uh, go to the ribosome and bring the amino acid with it. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at now, what actually happens at the ribosome. So a ribosome is made of a small and a large subunit. So this is the small subunit. And the messenger RNA, which has come from the nucleus, comes in and attaches to the small subunit of the ribosome. And then the large subunit sort of attaches over the top. So the messenger RNA is in between the small and the large subunits of the ribosome. On the large subunit, there are three attachment sites. So there are three places where transfer RNA molecules are able to, able to attach. Only two of them are occupied any one time. It's sort of like the third one can be occupied very briefly, but basically two transfer RNAs are in place at any one time. So let's have a look at how this works. First thing to remember, in fact, let me just go back a little bit. In the cytoplasm, there are lots and lots of free amino acids. Okay, they're just there, they're just waiting to be used. There are also lots of free transfer RNA molecules. All of the transfer RNA molecules, remember, have got um, a sequence of three bases at one end, which is our anticodon. So each transfer RNA is going to have a different codon, which is complementary to a codon, and so each of these could bring in potentially a different amino acid to the ribosome, depending on what the anticodon is and which amino acid it matches to. So this amino acid here, sorry, this transfer RNA here, um, the anticodon here matches with methionine. So this amino acid methionine is collected by our transfer RNA and it's taken to the ribosome. And the transfer RNA attaches to the ribosome and binds at this second attachment site. And you can see that the bases of the anticodon bind with the bases of the codon. So we get hydrogen bonding, temporary hydrogen bonding between the codon and the anticodon. A second transfer RNA molecule now needs to come to the ribos ribosome and the this transfer RNA molecule has an anticodon which corresponds to this amino acid. So it collects the amino acid 
and it brings it to the third attachment site. Again, we have complementary base pairing between the codon and the anticodon. A peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids. We're then going to have a third amino acid collected by a transfer RNA molecule. But before that happens, the ribosome moves along the messenger RNA molecule. So we've now got a spare attachment site. This transfer RNA molecule here is going to detach very soon. This, so this next part sort of happens pretty much all at the same time. So another transfer RNA molecule collects an amino acid and brings it to the ribosome and it binds there in the third attachment site. At the same time as that, this transfer RNA molecule over here detaches and it leaves the ribosome. And you can see that the first amino acid here is now free. But we now got three amino acids joined together. So we need to now make another attachment site free, which means the ribosome needs to move along the messenger RNA strand. So now again, a transfer RNA molecule collects a ribosome, uh, sorry, collects an amino acid, brings it to the ribosome. The transfer RNA in this site here, this is called the E site, the exit site, detaches moves away off into the cytoplasm. So these messenger RNA, sorry, these transfer RNA molecules here that have left the ribosome, they're now free to go and collect um, another amino acid. It will be the same amino acid that it had the first time because of course it has to correspond to the anticodon. But it can go and collect another one and bring it back to the ribosome um, as and when it's needed. So this process will continue until we reach a stop codon on the messenger RNA. At that point, this whole sequence, which would be much longer by now, will detach from the ribosome and be then free in the cytoplasm, at which point, sorry, not free in the cytoplasm, it will be free so that it's able to then be modified. So this is probably going to be taking place in the endoplasmic reticulum, which means that once it detaches, this sequence of amino acids can then move through from the rough ER to the Golgi apparatus, and it can be folded and modified until we have our final protein. Okay, so that's it. That's the whole translation process. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to just go back and just show you that sequence again a bit faster. Okay, so here we go. Alright. Okay, hope that makes sense. Thanks very much.